Hi, I'm Rob Pelf, founder and CEO of AdvantageLumber.com. Today we're going to show you how to install one of our deck tile applications over a standard concrete patio. So a typical concrete patio, uh, here we're in Florida today, it holds dirt, it can often have a lot of cracks like you see going through here, and it's just a maintenance nightmare to clean, and it doesn't make your zen zone look that great. So this is one of the, the deck tiles we're going to be throwing, putting down today. Uh, that we make at VangeLumber.com. This one happens to be a teak, but we also make it in other woods like Ipe, Kumaru, Masarinduba, Grappa, a bunch of different colors for your color palette. Now this teak is unfinished. It doesn't have any oil on it, but we're gonna put a water-based oil on top of this when the guys finish up laying this down. So this patio is about 16 foot by 18 foot. It's gonna be a couple hours to lay these down. They snap together like Legos. On the back of these deck tiles, there's a hole in each one of the four corners. And we're gonna take these deck-wise deck tile connectors. They hold the deck tile up off the patio a little bit for water and dirt to wash away from underneath them. And they just snap together with these pins going in those holes. And that keeps that a deck tile up off the concrete so that water and debris can float underneath there. And it stops the wood from having contact with the concrete so there's no wood rot. And then your next tile is just gonna pop down onto that little pin and these space the deck tiles nice and consistently apart. So these are good for on top of concrete, they're good on top of patios uh, with pavers. They also work great on top of flat roofs and rubber roofing. You can even put them in indoor showers or saunas. So these are one of my favorite products that we manufacture. They're very, very versatile. And if you're moving, if you rent your condo or you rent your townhouse or, or, or your home and you wanna take them with you, you can easily pop them up and take them with you. So there are holes in the deck tile connectors. If you wanna fasten these down to the concrete, that's really not necessary. Or if you're going on top of a flat roof, sometimes on a couple of these throughout the application, you'd put a ring of construction adhesive if you're going to concrete or roofing tar if you're going down to a, a rubber membrane. And you would just randomly throughout the job put a couple of those with some adhesive, but really not necessary. And that would just keep the whole thing from shifting around. So uh, the, biggest, the biggest thing in doing a job like this, if this is a square 16 by 18 foot patio, like I said, it's just when you get up to a, a post, going to notch around something. So you'll mark out on here and you'll remove the stainless steel screws where you're going to make a cut so you don't cut through the stainless steel screws. And that would be the notch around this. So it'll probably take as much time to notch around the couple posts that we have as it is to quickly throw down the rest of the deck tiles. So if this patio didn't have anything to notch around, it's probably a one hour install. But uh, it'll take a couple hours because we have several of these beams that we're notching around today. And then after that, we're gonna put on the Wise Coat water-based oil finish on top of these, and that'll keep that nice teak color. In fact, it even makes it look a little bit more golden brown on the teak. And uh, that's something that's gonna vary the application time. Uh, this area here, it's probably take about a half hour to slop that, that coating on, goes down very quickly. And it will probably do that about once a year, depending on how much UV this area gets uh, with the direction it's facing to the sun. Uh, but it's like oiling a cutting board. It's not like painting a wall. You just kind of slop it on with the paint roller there. So one of the coolest products we make, uh, deck tiles from AdvantageLumber.com. These are 24 inch by 24 inch. These are actually a commercial grade tile that we use in a lot of restaurants and rooftops. We also make a 20 inch by 20 inch deck tile for residential applications, but there's nothing saying you can't use the 20 inch for commercial or the 24 inch for residential. Uh, it's just aesthetics, what size you wanna see in your patio. Uh, also, customers ask a lot of times, what direction am I gonna run my deck tiles? Some customers like to keep the direct deck tiles running all the same direction. Aesthetically, I like to alternate each one. And I think when you look down the line of the deck tile, if everything doesn't perfectly line up, that throws your eyes off when you turn each one. It also creates a cool looking pattern. So you can make, you can go two straight and then one sideways or just one straight, one sideways and so on. So it's totally up to you. And hey, like I said, they snap up. So if you want to change the pattern later on because you and your significant other didn't come to an agreement, they're real easy, just pop up and snap them back down. 
Okay, so what we have down here is our first starter row of the deck tiles. And to start it against the wall, there's scoring marks on the back side of the deck tile connector where you can raise your knife or use some large uh, sheet metal shears on. And then you bend them back and forth a couple times and you end up with half a connector. And we use the half a connector when you're up against the wall for your starter row, just to space the deck tile up off the concrete in the back. And we use a full connector out to the front of that. And then we can cut this again to get a quarter piece of this just to put in the back corner. And you'll also notice here, this Florida concrete, if you would, but concrete all over the world, all over the country, is never really fully square. Neither is any construction wall. So you'll see there's a big gap here. We're gonna make a pencil mark down here. We're gonna scribe that to the wall, cut that with a jigsaw, and we're gonna get this first deck tile uh, fitted nice and tight to the corner here, just because a lot of times when you hit these corners, they kind of weighing out. So we just wanna cope that first deck tile so it fits nicely because we got a big gap here, we got no gap there. Okay, so to cope it, you can do a lot of different methods for coping, but I just like to run my finger against the wall there. You see that? And we're just gonna scribe it right to the wall. So barely taking off anything on this end, and we're taking off most of it back in here for the big bump of concrete. So for our first deck tile that we're gonna cope, we, we've kind of darkened the line up here so we can see it. And we're gonna leave it a little bit away from the wall anyway. So it's not like coping a piece up to a finished concrete fireplace that's gotta be all squiggly. It's gonna, we're gonna actually cope it as more of a tapering line. And we're gonna leave a little bit of gap to the, to the concrete, it will look fine there. Now we did check before you cut these, that free marker line, you just gotta eye it up and make sure, will I clear that screw on the back? Uh, we should clear that screw fine. So you, you know, you wanna avoid cutting through the stainless steel screws. Make sure you wear safety glasses just in case you do hit a screw in there when you're cutting. Okay, so we got this deck tile all set to go against the wall. We cut about a half inch off of the deck tile. We didn't have to move the backboard because that connector still caught the hole, still had plenty of meat right there. So we, we trimmed an extra little bit off the deck tile connector with, you can use a razor knife or reuse the sheet metal shears here on that one. Either way is easy. Uh, just so it wouldn't butt against the wall. You don't want that plastic protruding out past the deck tile. But you'll notice when you get the deck tiles, all the end grain is already sealed. And that's because wood gains and loses moisture at a higher rate out the end grain. We don't want it to lose moisture too quickly, even though these are kiln dried. Uh, they will lose a little bit of moisture as they hit the sun. So we want to coat the end grain with this Deckwise Ipe seal. And you can use this on the Ipe, you can use it on Garapa, Master and Duba, all our different types of exotic hardwoods. You can also use it on the teak. And this one I like a lot because it comes with this handy dandy little applicator. So it's basically like a, a giant nail polish applicator there with a brush. And this is a a wax emulsion, and if you remember ninth grade science class, an emulsion is two things that normally don't mix, mix together. So they use a little special magic um, muju there, and they mix together water and wax. So we're just gonna dip it in there, and we're just gonna slop. This will dry clear, but we don't wanna get it too much on the surface there. We're not worried about this edge board, that's the edge grain. We're worried about the end grain, because that's like a, a bunch of straws with open cells. And that's where water gains and loses most of its moisture from. So we're just gonna paint that along there. We can put it down wet. There's no need for this to dry. Uh, and if you get it on your skin, it's fine. It's just a uh, wax and water basically mixed together into a liquid form. So uh, we can go ahead. We're gonna set that right down in there wet. Uh, you near if you wanna put that in place. And there's nothing worse on a job site than when a supervisor just stands around and takes credit for a job. So even though I'm supervising today, I did I did put the application of the Ipe seal on the end grain there, so I can now say I helped the guys with the job or I did the job. So I really hate those supervisors that just stand around and say they did the job, but you know, now I did the job. Okay, so we got one row of the teak deck tiles against the house and we got one row coming out away from the house. So we did it this way because we want to make sure that we start with one full row against the house, just aesthetically will look better. And then we wanna make sure when we lay these out along the, going away from the house, 
that we don't end up with a little sliver. Uh, this piece here will end up with like one slat of the tile after we notch around the post, so that's doable. We just wanna make sure we don't end up with a quarter inch or a half inch. If we were ending up with something silly at the end, then we might cut one inch off the whole first row so that we end up with a more substantial piece out there at the end. Also, we're not gonna notch out the last piece yet because as we put down a couple of these rows together, you can push these in or out a little bit. So we wanna make sure before we notch that out there, that we put down a couple rows, they will square themselves up as we put them together. And that could adjust where that notch is for the post out there. So we're just setting the tile there for now. We'll put a couple more rows down here, square this up as we come out, and then we'll cut that notch. Okay, so we have most of the 24 by 24 inch tiles down, uh, except for where we had our material stacked here. All we have to do now is cut the perimeter tiles. Uh, each one of those is gonna be cut. Now, if you were going to just out an outdoor area coming off the house that didn't have a perimeter wall, uh, we'd be just about done. But this is about 15 minutes of work so far. Uh, honestly, it took us more time to get the material to the backyard than it did to actually lay them down. So uh, these go down super easy, super quick. Uh, you can smell the teak, already got the homeowner excited here. Uh, and it doesn't even have the oil on yet, which is gonna enhance the color and look the teak. So it's pretty exciting, quick and easy little DIY job if you would here. So uh, we're gonna start cutting the tiles around the perimeter. Each one of those also gets spaced off the concrete there with one of the deck tile connectors. And what I like to do when we cut those outside perimeter ones, on the back hole, we're gonna cut away the holes and some of those holes may get relocated. So if we pull one of the pins out of the ductile connector, that's the pin that goes up in that hole, that hole is no longer there. Say we cut this tile right here, we can then just use this as a drilling guide, slide that down onto the tile and drill our new hole. Uh, you can use that 10, 12 times before that plastic gets a little bit rounded out and then put your tile connector back in there. Use that for one of your regular tiles and then just grab another one to keep using for your drill guide. And that's for when you, when you cut for the outside perimeter. Now, if I'm gonna cut this tile here, say this is to the outside perimeter right here, what I'm gonna do before I cut this tile, I'm gonna unscrew this board and I'm gonna move it down to my cut line, okay? And then I'll already have the outside corner hole here. There won't be any need to do that. But if I'm notching around a post, it's gonna go like that, then I'm gonna to have to make a new hole here. Again, I'm just gonna move this board down. And if I'm gonna cut through when I cut these tiles, if I'm gonna cut through, I'm just gonna make sure again that I'm not cutting through any of the stainless steel screws. I'll just remove that screw with a Phillips head screwdriver or modern days Phillips head screw gun. So again, 24 inch by 24 inch plantation teak. It grows in rows like broccoli, super eco-friendly. It uh, doesn't get any better than that. Lasts super long time and it's super eco-friendly. Okay, a question we get a lot of times from customers is, how do I cut a deck tile? You'll see when you get to the outside perimeter against the wall, we have to cut all the tiles on the perimeter there. So we've already cut this tile to fit in here. And if you flip these around to the back, this is a whole tile here, and this is our cut tile here. So we simply took the screws out of this one backing board, moved it down, ran it through the table saw and cut this. Now, if you don't have a table saw, no problem. You could cut this with a jigsaw. You could cut this with a circular saw. Teak is nice and easy to work with. It's a lightweight wood. Uh, it's a lot lighter than working with some of our drastic hardwoods, extreme hardwoods like Ipe or Kumaru or Tigerwood. Uh, so this cuts really nice with simple carbide blades. Uh, it is a good idea when you start the project, start it with a new blade. Uh, it will give you less splinters on the surface along the cut edge. So. Uh, you know, carbide blades are cheap now, you know, 20 bucks for a circular saw blade, uh, you get a nice cut there. So uh, real simple to cut these. And we're just gonna pop this one down in.
And you see these hold it up out of the water there so uh, dirt and water can drain underneath the tiles. And if I ever need to get underneath these for some reason, if this was on top of a flat roof and I had a, a puncture in the roof I needed to patch, I could simply yank these back up. Okay, so we got this teak tile notch here to go around one of these support posts. We've also been cutting them to length and notching them around posts for the lanai, the screened in lanai here. Now, admittedly, it'll take as much time to notch around the perimeter of this as it will to lay the center field of the deck tiles. Uh, actually, it could even take you more time to cut all these around the edge here. So one alternative to cutting these around the edge uh, fitting them around each post is to use colored rock and to do an accent feature here of rock. You see a lot, a lot of times on uh, rooftops where they don't want to have to go right up next to the wall. You can just end on a full tile and then have a field of stones there. It looks uh, real nice and decorative. The water drains through them just like it does the tiles. And it saves you a lot of work from having to go all the way around cutting each piece. So uh, we do have this one notch to go around the, the pillar here. and it's gonna snap in and we're gonna keep going like that. But like I said, one alternative is just end with a full tile or even a partial tile. You could cut the tiles in half and then just do a small border of stone. Guys, you really backed me into a corner here. Get out of the way, I wanna get this done. <laughs> Okay, so we laid this down in record time, like two hours tops. Uh, we got everything cut. We just got some spots, little scuffs and stuff from handling and oil off the guy's hands and uh, pencil marks, that kind of thing. So we're gonna take one of these round five inch orbitals. This happens to be my personal favorite. I use in my own workshop, uh, five inch DeWalt orbital. And we're gonna put uh, some 80 and uh, for most of it, 120 grit sandpaper on there. Just quickly get a buzz over those spots on the deck. And then afterwards, we're gonna mop on some of this Wise Coat water-based finish. This is a deck finish and it's water-based so it doesn't smell like the oil-based. You don't gotta worry about the rags being flammable like the oil-based. When you're using an oil-based stain, a balled up rag can ignite on you so you don't gotta worry about that with this product. A lot of job sites have caught on fire because someone left a balled up oil-based rag in the corner or in a garbage can, and even on a 70 degree day, uh, when that linseed oil evaporates out a lot of those common finishes, it creates heat inside that balled up rag. And when it hits about 104 degrees inside the rag, it can burst into flames. And that smoldering can happen long after everybody's left the job site. So with the water base, we like to promote that because you don't have any of those worries. There's also no VOCs in there. You don't get the nasty smells uh, in your face when you're putting that down. So. Uh, we like everything about the water base. It even seems on some applications and some climates that it lasts a little bit longer than the uh, oil base. So really love the water base stuff. Uh, we're gonna put that on with a, a mop applicator. Uh, we washed this out and uh, gonna reuse it from a previous demonstration, but just gonna kind of mop that in. The guys are gonna show you how they'll do that. Guys, like I already mentioned, we make these in a lot of different woods. These ones happen to be teak. We also make them the Kumaru, the Tiger Wood, the Ipe, all our standard decking woods. If you wanna learn more about teak, it's a great eco-friendly plantation grown species that we, we harvest. Uh, check out our Talking Teak video starring me truly again. Uh, we educate a lot about teak, a lot of things you didn't know, maybe a couple of things you did know. Uh, but teak uh, is one of the best building materials in the world especially that it's plantation grown. So it, it grows in rows on a farm like broccoli, totally renewable resource. So check out that video, Talking Teak.
Well, there you go, guys. This is a couple, nice couple hour project, nice DIY project, easy for you guys at home to do. Uh, we normally don't install this. We did this just for a demonstration, but it shows that these guys had never put down uh, deck tiles before. Uh, it's easy to do. Don't be afraid if you've never worked with them before. We can talk you through it on the phone. Uh, look at our, our YouTube videos, how to install them. It's pretty simple. They snap together like Legos. Great for rooftops, backyard patios, over concrete, uh, over pavers, uh, even for the outdoor shower. So go to advantagelumber.com. On the left-hand column, look for deck tiles. And these little modular deck tiles, they come in 20 inch by 20 inch, 24 inch by 24 inch, and even 24 inch by 48. Uh, the most economical ones are the 20 inch. They all go together the same way. They're nice, simple, and easy. So again, advantagelumber.com, you can order the connectors, the deck tiles, and the deck finish, or you can look for our deck tile packages that have all that together so you don't even have to think about it. So advantagelumber.com, give me your credit card number, we'll give you some wood, everybody's happy.